Hello everyone, it's Dawn and welcome back to my channel. Well today we're going to have a little chat about ink tent pencils because I've seen either on my own channel or I've heard others on other channels that I watch say that they're having problems with the colours because some of the colours on the ends, for example these bits here, these bits are supposed to be the sample of what you see when you paint them but it doesn't always work out. Let me show you what I mean. This is poppy red. So you think, oh, poppy red, nice and bright. We'll do that, we'll do a poppy. So I'll just make sure that you can see what I'm doing. So you do that, you draw a nice poppy shape or sort of poppy shape, so I'm gonna pop that there. You grab yourself a brush, which is already in the water, fabulous. And actually what we do need to do first is just shade that in. That was almost today's deliberate mistake. So you, I'm not being particularly neat because I'm not doing a poppy demonstration. I'm just showing you the color. So you, you do that, you colour it in, you don't have to be particularly neat as you can see, you can if you want, but once we've smoothed it over with a brush and blended it, it will smooth itself out. So you do that and you think, oh that's the colour it is. And so we put our brush in our water and there's no great surprise, it, it is what it says on the tin or on the end of the pencil, but sadly that's not the case with all the pencils. So you do that. I'm not showing you my water because I've already had a little play this morning and it's a bit mucky. So it's just sort of over there. But that's the poppy red and that's fine. That doesn't bring up any surprises. So, but for example, say you wanted a pale brown and you look at that one. This one's called tan. This ink tent pencil's called tan. And you look at it and you think, oh yes, that's a nice ink. That's a nice pale one. We'll use that. And so you get, you start to shade it. You think, hang on a minute, that's not the same colour. So, and I'm not pressing very hard. So you shade it over like that. You want a nice, you, you think you've got a nice pale, pale brown. And it's not really that pale at all. And so what we do, again, we take our brush. And it's pale-ish, but it's not as pale as it looks on the end of the pencil. So what I would suggest you do is that I suggest I would suggest you make a colour chart. Now, don't worry, we're not going through all 72 pencils because we'll be here all day. So I'm just going to turn this over. I know it's going to make your paper underneath wet, but that's why I've got some scrap paper down on my table. So what I would suggest you do is you do yourself a colour chart. So grab yourself a pen. Just put we'll we'll stick with the two that we've done and we'll only do two and I'll show you how we do it. So you put poppy red you don't have to be particularly neat as long as you can read it that's all that matters and you t what I would suggest you do is so you take your poppy red you do yourself a rectangle and I would suggest dividing the rectangle in half but coloring both halves that line was just a guide it'll disappear in fact you don't even have to do it at all if you don't want to fill it in fairly solidly you don't have to worry about it too much and at the end of this, I'm going to show you a really cool trick that I've discovered with ink tense pencils. I didn't even know you could do it. It's one of those crazy ideas. I thought, I wonder if that will work. Or actually, it's one of those ideas that if you said to someone, I'm going to do this, they'd say, don't be daft, it will never work. But it does. So bear with me. I'll just show you how to do this colour chart. And then I'll show you a really cool trick with ink tense pencils. So back to our colour chart. Leave that bit dry and just add water to the second bit because that way you can look at your colour chart and you can tell what they look like dry if you want to do dry blending pencils and what it looks like wet so just do that and so again with our tan so we'll just write down here tan because that's what it's called you can write the number if you want to I just prefer to do the colour because if I'm looking for something I don't look for it by number I look for it by colour so again just do yourself I'm not even going to put that dividing line this time. Just give it a colour, just colour a little swatch or a patch or rectangle, whatever you want to call it. There's no right or wrong thing to call it. You can call it whatever you like. It's your colour chart, you can call it what you want. So we're going to, again, leave one dry and we're going to add water to the other half. So that way, if you do that, we'll just leave it for that 
those two for now. But if you do that with all of your pencils, whether they're ink tents or anything else, especially if you're getting a new set of pencils, I would always suggest do yourself a colour chart. It does take a while, but believe me, it's worth it because you won't get any nasty surprises when you go to do a painting. So now on to this cool trick that I promised. Oh dear, <laughs> I've made a bit of a mess there. Never mind. It's only, it's only scrap paper. So what I wanted to show you, I've brought this, I'm going to bring this in and I've got another piece of paper that we're going to work on. So what I've got here, I'm going to use leaf green for this. It doesn't matter what you use, it depends what you're going to use. We're going to use our, I've already done, we're going to use our ink tense pencils for stamping. I know it sounds crazy, but they are ink and it is inked with pigment and that's what ink pads are after all. So what we do, I'll show you my stamp in a minute. Give yourself quite a thick application of colour on a scrap piece of paper. What I'm going to do one day is make myself some colour swatches just for stamping, but I haven't done that yet. And here I have got myself, I'm using uh, an embossing folder because I haven't got any ink blocks. I did have, but when I had a clear out, I think they went out with it. So that's why I'm using that. But you'll see what that is in a minute. And what we do, this is a really cool trick. I couldn't believe it when it worked. I thought, I wonder if this will work. To be honest, not thinking it would. I thought maybe this is just too crazy. But the principle was there. You've got ink and you've got pigment or colour. And that's what you've got when you have your ink pad. So I thought, well, this is ink. It has got colour in it. Would it work? So give it a good watering. Not too much. Don't make it absolutely sopping wet. And then as you would, there is your colour patch. My stamp is on here. If you want to use an ink block, that's absolutely fine. Press it in, make sure it soaks in. And then what we do is we lift it up and we stamp it. Let me just pop that to one side. Now this doesn't take long to dry, so it can't be long. Just pop it over, press it down. And, well, it did, oh, I think what I did there, I left it too long. The other way of doing it, if it doesn't work that way, we're gonna try that again. Because it worked when I did it the first time, it worked beautifully. I'm just going to hydrate that again, just to give it a bit more water and do it while it's still good and wet. You have to be quick with this. If that doesn't work this time, I'm going to show you another way of doing it. It's quite hot in here, so it doesn't take long to dry. So we're going to do that again and stamp it like, oops, sorry, you can't see that. Let me just move my water out of the way. Stamp it like that. But, that's fantastic. When I did it earlier on, I did it that way. Whoops. And as you can see, it's stamped beautifully and I used that there. So another way around you can do it, if you're having trouble, like I was, that's always the way, isn't it? What? There is another way you can do this. So dip your brush into your water and actually paint it on. You see that, guys? Yeah. Paint it onto your stamp like that. Just have your colour and paint it onto your stamp with your brush. And we'll see if that works any better. Let's hope so. So just make sure you can see. Give it a few seconds for the ink to transfer to the paper. And there you go. It's a bit blotchy, but it'll dry clearer. So once that's dry, and because it's a it's a ferny, it's a fern, that will dry a bit clearer, and you can use that to make a wreath. So I'm really I was really annoyed with that because well I wasn't annoyed, but when I did that one, it stamped first time, probably because I used a different colour. I don't know whether it makes a difference with the ink that you use. So if okay, let's try just once more, and I'll use what I've got there. But that does show you at least it, it does work. So I'm just going to wet that over again. And I'm going to go straight into it like that. And stamp it there. There, like that. But if you did that several times around an aperture, for example, you could make a really good wreath. But I did like the way that came out because once that's finished, once that's dry, you can, I was just looking for the pen, I should have put the pencil back, but there we go. You can use your pencil to bring out those ferny bits. So 
And all I'm doing is making very small strokes. It's nothing complicated. I'm just using some very small pencil strokes, dry pencil strokes, to bring back the fern, to the fern parts. So you can do that and make that as detailed as you like. So you can use the ink tense pencils as a base for your stamping. You might not want to do it all the time, I certainly won't, but just for a change. So there you go. There is our colour chart and a really cool way of using your ink tense pencils to stamp. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that, including my little bit, but that was the one I did off camera. Of course it went perfectly, naturally. And they're the ones we did together on camera, which sort of didn't go quite perfect, but perfect enough. Good enough. So there we go. There. I was looking for my colour chart, but I think it disappeared in the mess. But there we go. Tell you what I'll do. I'll leave that one down there. I'll move my water out of the way. And I'll leave those there for you, just to show how we did it and what the results could be once you get the right colour combination. So there you go, guys. There was our colour chart somewhere along the line. And a really cool trick for stamping with ink tent pencils. So I hope you enjoyed that and even laughed along at my blundering my way through it, as usual. So for those of and before I forget, for those of you who've been asking about my Graham, thank you very much. He's coming on quite well. I think it's going to be a slow process, but he has started taking a few steps. So he has walked a little bit, not much, but a little bit. So I'm going to go up this afternoon to see how he is. He was quite bright and cheerful yesterday when I saw him, but now he's getting to the point where he's a bit fed up and he wants to come home. So now I know he's feeling better. So thank you for those who've asked. He is continuing to make progress. And all the time I can, I will continue to do videos when I've got the time and when I'm not rushing about doing this, that and the other for him. So I had a few moments today, so I thought I'd get on with the video. And I'm hoping to do another one within the next day or so, because I've got a paper craft society box on its way, or within the next couple of days. So we might have an unboxing. So I'll see you then. And in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Do take care, everybody. Have fun, stay safe, and as always, happy crafting. Bye-bye for now.